Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So Donald Trump today, a new poll came out of Harvard Harris and he has a six point lead over Joe Biden. And compared to the last poll, you take a look at this, he expands his lead by two percentage points. He has the momentum according to polling. He has a lot of the metrics on his side. This is why Joe Biden is trying to debate him. They say publicly, well, you know, the polls are all wrong. They're going to be wrong just like they were in 2022, even though if you look at the polls in the swing states back then in, in May of 2022, they were actually underestimating Republicans in most cases from the end result. So it's kind of like an apples to oranges type of comparison. But why is Biden trying to go out there and debate Donald Trump and, and just try to get back in the spotlight so badly if Donald Trump is actually doomed to fail and Biden's going to win no matter what? Of course not. They realize the legal stuff is backfiring. The trial is falling apart. It probably is going to end in a hung jury. It should end in an acquittal. I wouldn't say a conviction's entirely off the table, but it's at least a lot less on the table than it was a couple of weeks ago. Thank you, Michael Cohen. You're seeing what's going on there. There was no crime. They haven't provided a crime anywhere except New York. If it was anybody on trial except Donald Trump, it would be thrown in the garbage can. It would have never been prosecuted. It would have never been brought to trial. Would have never even, you know, been a thought that popped up in any one of these corrupt DA heads. But no, because it's Trump, they take it to trial. And the American people are the ones in terms of the election that get to either acquit or convict. And whenever they're trying to make Trump look like he's guilty or try to say he's guilty when he's not, the American people know this. More people wake up every day. It's why less people trust the media. And we know this, the, the trust for the media polls are actually the lowest that they've ever been. 2016, I think, was the second lowest it's been until now. And what happened in 2016? We know what happened. And now you're kind of seeing a little bit of that same energy come back. And Donald Trump is now leading the polls. He's led the polls for how many months nationally? I mean, he's led the polls since September nationally. There was a brief period in October it was tied, but still, he's led the polls from September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. It's been eight months, over eight months since Biden last led. And that's the popular vote. That's not the Electoral College. If Trump is winning the popular vote, he's winning the election. If he loses the popular vote by less than three, he's going to win the election. But no matter which way you try to look at this, Donald Trump's in a good position because you talk about eight months, compare that to like the five or six days he led the popular vote his entire political career before this election cycle. It's a very good thing for Donald Trump. It's all backfiring. And all of the metrics that a lot of these Democrats will point to are kind of falling apart too, mainly the, the fundraising. We heard Trump is going to be dead broke and all of his money he is raising is going to go to legal fees, except that's not the case. There's one pack that's given some money, much of which was back in 2023, that's not his main pack for his presidential run either. But still, facts don't matter to these people. They ignore the fact the DNC paid for Biden's legal bills for his classified documents thing, whatever. But you look at this, Joe Biden, the fundraiser juggernaut Biden only raised $51 million in April. And is it possible that Biden is cannibalizing a lot of his donor base? It's possible. Like, he does have a cash-on-hand advantage, which is true. He's going to outspend Trump. He did in 2020, and he outspent him very well down the stretch, which gave him a leg up. But, you know, Hillary Clinton outspent Donald Trump. But you can't spend your way to popularity. Biden spent a lot of money on ads already. And his poll numbers have gotten worse. So how are the ads exactly doing him any favors? Trying to guilt trip voters over democracy, abortion. It's not moving the needle for him, at least not right now. You know, a lot can change, but still. Donald Trump outraised Biden by $25 million in April. He got $76 million. Biden, they didn't announce it as quickly because they knew it was nothing to brag about. Biden only brings in $51 million. Biden raised $90 million in March. Now he brings in $51 million in April. 
That's less than he had in February, and we're in full gear election season right now. So it's true that he has more cash on hand. That's true. He has the edge there. But at what cost does he exactly have it? You know, it's it's not really something to brag about when you're not able to sustain the level of, of donations coming in month after month after month, and you're going to be spending a lot now just to try and, and stop the bleeding. What are you going to have down the stretch exactly? You know, it's, it's a sign that a lot of people might not want to throw money at Biden because they realize you know what? The guy is is probably going to lose. They see Trump. He's out there. They realize that things were better under Trump in many cases. If these donors have donated to both parties, they're kind of, you know, giving their money to the other side. So a 43% decline from Biden in March and raising less in April than he did in February. So we'll see if this continues, but this is not really a good look for him. Now, the only other cope we've seen from a lot of people is that, well, Biden has uh, more donors than Trump, or he has more donors than he had in 2020, but Trump has less. And it's like, okay, so the incumbent president gets more donors. That's not surprising. Donald Trump led Biden in donors at this point, barely in 2020. Biden went through a brutal primary where he wasn't getting a third of the support of the primary until after Super Tuesday, which was in March. Meanwhile, Trump didn't have a primary then, had a little bit of a primary now. Uh, that might explain why you, you see in, in states like Iowa, a lot of people sort of, of dropping off from the Trump thing here on this map. But still, Trump's not lagging behind very much, despite him not being a sitting president. Meanwhile, Biden, is he really gaining a ridiculous amount over last time at this point? Eh, not exactly. He was for a while, obviously. The primary is a factor, but now not so much. Meanwhile, Trump is pretty much where he was overall, so it's not really a bad thing. And you look at Biden, he's seeing a lot of drop-off in a lot of, of black-heavy communities and these places that really backed him in the primary, like uh, you know, Eastern Pennsylvania, for example, that's not really a great sign. Las Vegas, he's losing raw numbers of donors there. You could look at that if you want to overanalyze it and say, well, this is actually even more of a problem given the fact that Biden was not an incumbent then and had to go through a brutal primary, whatever. But still, it's important to know that Biden and Trump are basically tied in overall donors. And we don't know how this is going to go down the stretch. But last time down the stretch, you had the whole BLM thing. There were plenty of, of things that Biden capitalized on to raise money from individual donors. And you look at that, Biden ended up with 4.9 million donors. Trump only ended up with, I believe, like 2.5 million donors. So Biden got over 2 million, regardless of whatever the uh, total number at the end of the day was. I think he had like a 2.2 million at the minimum of a donor advantage compared to Trump, but now it's over for Trump because Trump is only down by 15,000. Like down the stretch, it, it will matter. But like I've said, it's, it's not a metric that's entirely definitive. The polls, obviously not perfect, but that's probably the, the best indicator completely because there's a lot of contradictory ways at looking at something like this. Same thing with cash advantage as well. But still, Biden not bringing in as much money and Trump outraising him for the first time this election cycle, that's good. And it's a big middle finger to all the people who said that Donald Trump could not outraise Biden. He can't compete with Biden in fundraising, but he did outraise Biden in April. We'll see what happens in May. But this is absolutely huge. And, and obviously, you're going to get a trial verdict very soon, uh, whether it's going to be late May, early June, whenever that's going to be, you're going to see a Trump bump. It doesn't matter what the verdict is. If he gets acquitted, he's going to use it to fundraise. And that's another thing. Donors might be holding off for Trump because they're like, oh, well, if he goes to jail, then we don't want to give him money. But if he's going to be acquitted in like the only case that they're probably going to bring before election day to trial and he gets acquitted, then I think he'll get a boost. But if he's convicted, he might also get a boost, especially if he stays out of jail because then he gets to play the, the martyr card again. And if he goes to jail, who knows what's going to happen? It could be the backfire of a century. I don't think they're going to give him jail time because I don't think they're dumb enough to do it. We'll see if it ends up being a hung jury or a conviction. If it was anywhere reasonable with reasonable people that were actually unbiased, we know that it would be a unanimous acquittal, would uh, probably have never been brought to trial, obviously, but that's not the point. Either way, Trump is in a good position. And the other metrics that 
look better for Biden are starting to look better for Trump. So what metrics are Biden really going to have at the end of the day? That's another question. I don't know. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.